Hey everyone, it's me, Carl Libertini, and thanks for tuning in. Melodyne does a lot of things, yes, and for good reasons, because it's great at it. One of my favorite applications, editing applications, is DSing. But not just that, it's more than that. It's about amplitude editing, because under the amplitude tool, you also have the ability to create fades and now DS, which I think is so creative and useful, because when you're in the Melodyne ecosystem, why not do more with it so you can be more creative with your inserts and further processing later on? And I'm going to show you just how to do that. Okay, let's take a listen to what we're working with here. Here's a dry vocal, a little guitar, some bass, and female singers do tend to have a little bit more sibling sometimes. And that's why I chose this file. Okay, so we're going to get into some editing. Now, in your DAW of choice, it might be a little bit different. Here in Pro Tools, thanks to Audio Random Access, Melodyne is integrated into the Digital Audio Workstation. So I'm just going to right-click and choose Edit, and it's going to take that passage that I have selected, and it's going to analyze it and open it here within the Melodyne window for us. Okay. Now, if this happens, no worries. It just probably identified it as... Uh, probably just identified it as, yeah, percussive. If this happens, don't worry, because, you know, we are working with melodic. Just come up to algorithm and choose melodic and hit redetect. It will happen sometimes. Usually, I think this, depending on the vocal performance itself, maybe it's a little bit more rhythmic, you know. All right, so here we have the vocal. Now, thanks to Audio Random Access, you can see that the DAW and Melodyne are now synced. So let's edit this vocal right now. Let's start right there. And I will zoom in. Beautiful. Now, as I was mentioning before, thanks to the since Melodyne 5, we now have tools to identify sibilance and work with it um, separately. And why do you want to do that? It's because you don't want to pitch edit sibilance. You don't want to bring it higher in pitch or lower in pitch. It's just going to sound more unwanted, if you will. So what Melodyne has come up with is really brilliant. Here's the amplitude tool in a menu bar right here. And from the drop down, we have fades. You can create fades in and out and sibilance tool. And these tools are also accessible by right clicking anywhere in the track field and choosing amplitude and sibilance. Now, you can see that Melodyne has now identified sibilance here with these vertical lines. Okay, check it out. Not just sibilance, it could be any consonant, anything with non-musical value, like a T or a CH or a K or a S for sibilance. So when you see this right here, it's telling you that that's non-musical and you have that awareness power now. You, you're in the zone with it. What I like to do is draw a cycle range. This is one of my first tips for you. Because of Audio Random Access, you can see here that we now set a cycle range in Melodyne and it also reflects itself here in Pro Tools. And while this audio is looping, we can go in and start editing everything. Pitch, timing, amplitude, de-essing, you name it, modulation, vibrato, it's all in there. It's all in, it's really great format. And the reason why I appreciate this is because it's all about workflow. Being able to go in there and target your sibilance like we can do, not only sonically, but visually now, or any unwanted consonants, and being able to do it without having to stop and crossfade and worry about blips and clicks and creating, you know, problems with zero crossing points and such. It's so easy. And once you get used to this technique, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. All right. So let's grab our sibling tool and let's start editing. I want to notch this one down a little bit. And a lot of people ask me, how do you know when to stop? Well, you should stop before it sounds a little bit too lispy. You don't want that. You don't want to get into that zone. You still want the sound a little natural. But keep in mind, the reason why you're DSing is so that when you add further processing like compressors and mastering, that sibilance doesn't get even more louder and unwanted in your ears. So by taming it here in advance, you're doing yourself a big service later on. And, of course, 
as your mix grows and things do change dynamically in volume, you can go back and tweak these a little bit more as need be. You have that power of flexibility and your lead vocals deserve that much attention. So take a look right here. We have 27%. You can actually go in there and you can add that value. You could say, you know what? I want it to be minus 35 and it'll tweak it down for me. Whatever we have highlighted here, keep that in mind too. All right, let's check it out. Can you go stick around if you want to know the truth? Can you go stick around if you want to know the truth? Okay, I can live with that one right now. Knowing full well that it's a good starting point, I can go back and tweak it a little, a little bit later if I want to. But here, we now have, let me change my loop zone to there. Bring this over and let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so here we've got another consonant here and the truth it's the ending of the syllable okay so with my siblings tool let's get editing on this one truth. notice how just the unwanted part is being attenuated down first and not the melodic audio and this is in between a quick phrase Again, a testament to how powerful Melodyne is and how reliable it can be. It wants you to succeed. Thank you, Melodyne. All right, True. check this out. If you go higher, it'll obviously invert it, and that'll sound really weird. <laughs> okay, I just did that, for example. Okay, and of course, of course, this is all completely um, undoable. Let's bring it down to about there. Great. Now, if you notice, at the end of that syllable, it gets a little bit louder there. This is where you can apply a fade tool. Now, the fade tool is really easy. You can click and drag it in from the end or the beginning of a note. It's that easy to use, that powerful. Or you could click within, and it'll create the ending point for you where you want it. Just two ways to get to the same results. Now, why would I, why would I use a fade tool here? The power of being able to fade out on a particular moment within a syllable or a phrase is really creative. And again, this goes back to what I was saying about how your lead vocals do, does deserve this kind of level of attention because you want to serve it. You want to do it justice and really, really be of service here. So by fading out that unwanted little bit of non-musical junk can really, you know, create things, keep it more natural and give you more power. The truth. See how it ends a little bit more gradually? It doesn't stay loud throughout the entire passage there. Fade tool, de-essing, amplitude tool, it's there for you to use. I'm telling you, once you get started with this in Melodyne, you will be so happy and you will wonder why you could ever live without it. You just can't. If you know the truth. Okay, let me zoom out now. And if you notice, I love working in sections of audio. Like I literally, in a real world working scenario, will just loop about that much and it'll go through and I can start editing pitch, making some note separations, and of course, de-essing like we want to highlight in this video, amplitude editing really, which also includes fading in and out. All right, let's carry on and see where we're at. Almost everybody lies. Okay, there's a big one. Let's draw our cycle range right there and let's zoom in. A little bit it says the very end of that passage everybody lies almost everybody lies let me draw that cycle range a little bit further right there okay now you've been following along let's grab our de-essing tool there it is right there and if i was to drag it down here see how smart that is so in essence you could create a separation now if you really wanted you could create a separation between those two and then you could further go in there and just signal that out. But you want to be careful. You don't want to make any kind of hard or an, create an anomaly here when this note transitions into this note. So always let your ears be the judge. So some of you might be asking, why not just make a separation there and, you know, target out all the siblings? Well, Melodyne is very smart that way. By not doing that, sometimes it flows and blends a little bit easier because remember, this is a melodic performance. So one voice singing fluidly okay so in that case i wouldn't i wouldn't parcel that out with the um a separation Lies. let's just bring it down a little bit 
almost everybody lies. So I'm gonna exaggerate this to create a list, but this is what you don't want. Ready? Almost everybody lies. Yeah, that's what you don't want. Let's take the bass and the acoustic out. Ready? Almost everybody lies. See how lispy that sounded now? That's what you don't want. So, and that's at minus 80%. Let's lies. bring this up a little bit to 50 per 49%. Almost everybody lies. A little bit nicer. And remember, we could grab our fade tool here and we could actually tweak it now a little bit further. Almost everybody lies. Not bad. I like that. And again, this will change when we add further processing inserts in our favorite compressors and such. I learned this hard fact in my youth. Or not. Let's see. There's some real siblings in this section right here, too. I learned this hard fact in my youth. Okay. Let's grab this DSing tool and let's notch this, this down. All right. Let's play from there. I learned this hard fact in my youth. Yeah, definitely going to bring the, the TH ending on that down. I learned this hard fact in my youth. You know what? This might be a, another job for the fade tool. I learned this hard fact in my youth. Not bad. Now, I'm going to grab the de again, tweak youth. that a little bit more, and this one down this, a little bit more. I learned this hard fact in my youth. There, I like that better. It still sounds natural. And I think it'll definitely work in the mix. Here we go. But I still try to recognize. A lot of S's there. All right. <laughs> I could do this for days. Nice. Audio editing is an art. Nice. That's why you get awards for it. But I still try to recognize. I'm going to lower nice. this one a little bit. But I still try to recognize. All right. Now I'm going to do my little fade out trick here on the end. But I still try to recognize. Nicer. So there's a little trick for you. And I'm giving you that because this is what I use. You know, when you when you close out a syllable like we're doing here with a consonant or a, a, an S, uh, and fading it out, I think, helps blend in some more natural, uh, you know, from the singer and the listener's POV. That's just my opinion, but it's worth trying. All right? Try it for yourself. Let us know what you think. All right, let's get into the next part. You say you think. Here's where the male singer joins us. You say you think I can. You got some, got some siblings right there, don't we? And you say. Yes, a big load of siblings right there. Let's take the lead singer out, the male singer, and just stay on the lead female singer. And you say. And he is, where is he? Where is that guy? Let's switch to here and I will just mute everything. And you say you think I can do anything. He might be in there. I can't and it's me. <laughs> Where is that guy? Oh, here he is. I soloed him. Okay, there we go. And you say you think. All right, let's grab our DSing tool. Real world working scenario, people, and I'm gonna bring that down quite a bit 54%. You say a little bit too much, and you and you say being able to target with that visual does help so much. I can do anything, but I can't, and it's late. And maybe last night was a big, a big mistake. It's this part right here. I can do anything, but I can't. And, and it's late. I can't, and it's late. All right, not too bad, but I'm going to bring this down a little bit. I yeah. can't, and it's late. So you could be as... I, this is another advantage of Melodyne. You could be as gentle or extreme as you'd like, but whatever serves the end results. So always keep that in mind. Just a little bit can go a long way. Maybe last night was a big, a big mistake, but... Here comes some... I start drinking, you call back. Here we go. Let's bring this down here. I start drinking, you call back. 
And I've been thinking I love you. Nice. Okay. So we've done quite a bit of DSing here. And this is just one phrase, one part of the song. A really, really beautiful song that my friend Kevin wrote. And I just absolutely love it. All right. Let's bring in. Uh, some of the instruments now because I want to hear how it's evolving how it's going to fit in the mix um, because there's a lot going on here all right let me bring in all that stuff Did you wanna tie me up? Did you wanna tie me down? so when sibilance doesn't pop out and you don't notice it doesn't take you away from the emotion or the the whole embodiment of the song then you're on the right track we was able to go in there and target the siblings thanks to Melodyne's visual aids and what we're hearing. And be able to utilize amplitude tools uh, with volume and targeting siblings and non-musical consonants. But use the fade tool to contour how siblings and consonants come in and leave those phrases. I mean, even on a phrase level, super powerful. All right, I'm going to now bring in some of my processing here. I've got some EQ uh some dynamics let me unmute this and let's see what this sounds like in our mix now because as i said before remember once you start adding compressors and automation you know the amplitude dynamics it's, it's going to evolve so you know if you have to go back and tuck something in melodyne's always waiting on standby for you did you want to tie me up sounds nice did you want to tie me down you're drinking from my cup Can you go a second round If you want to know the truth Almost everybody lies Still sounds I natural this heart back in my youth couple of, couple of notes I, I could probably tweak try to recognize. Nice ending there And there you have it So, obviously If you haven't tried this yet Just remember Melodyne makes it super, super easy for you to identify the non-musical content with these striped areas, the vertical striped areas. And again, they could be sibilants or anything non-musical, consonants and such, even breathing. Uh, so keep that in mind. And under the amplitude tool, right there, you got the amplitude, fade tool, and the sibilance tool. Couldn't be any easier than that. Right click, uh, scroll to them, and just pick the one you need the right tool for the job and really just have fun. I feel that when you have, we can leverage this kind of power to source, edit your audio in advance, kind of make it sound like it was recorded that way. Then everything you do from this point on is going to be more creative and less corrective. Let Melodyne handle the preparation work. You and Melodyne together, of course. You are the audio editor. Uh, but these tools are for everyone, and, and that's what makes Melodyne amazing. So that's a look into some tips and tricks with DSing, using the fade tool and some amplitude editing here in Melodyne with your vocals. Remember, a little goes a long way, and your vocals deserve the best always. So try these tips and techniques for yourself, and let us know what you think. And as always, thank you for watching. My name's Carlo Libertini, and stay busy and stay creative. Did you want to tie me up? You wanna tie me down? Are you drinking from my cup? Can you go a second round if you wanna know the truth?